huge advanced manual. It's probably got like a 70 letter name and 200 digit number in it. He's got so many manuals. Please help me welcome John Anderson. There's two books that I'd like to share with you today about, mainly it's this first one, The Business Model Generation. And when I first was reading it, I was thinking, oh, Business Model Generation, they're talking about the millennials. Duh. No. No, it's about the process of generating business models. Now I'm going to pass around a what's called the canvas. This is called the business model canvas. And it breaks apart a business activity, any kind of commercial, any kind of activity we do that has to have legs, that has to stand on its own, whether it's a club or an organization, anything like that. And if you flip the back of it over, you see an illustration, and this is a working canvas, and then this is an illustration on the back. This is the work of Alexander Oscar Walder, a Swiss young man of about 40, I'd say, and Yves Pignor, who is their co-authors. And Yves is uh, from Europe. They're both from Europe, obviously. And Yves is the head of an academic paper. And it was very clever, I think, of Alexander to partner with Eves because Eves has a built-in team, a big, massive team of academics that he works with to do academic peer-reviewed articles for this journal. So they put together a team of 470 collaborators to build this book. Now, this book was researched in 2008 and 9, and it was published in 2010, and then the value proposition book was done in 2014. So this is strategic planning work, and it builds upon work of uh, Eric Ries, a lot, the Lean Startup, and Vern Harnish, Scaling Up, and Greg Crabtree, uh, Simple Numbers, Straight Talk, and authors like that. This is a fast way to do strategic planning. It's the preliminary work of the innovation that then can be built into a written document such as a strategic plan. Now in it, Alexander breaks a business organization up into nine categories. And you use post-it notes. The reason it's like this is you use post-it notes and you scribble notes on the post-it notes and stick it onto these blocks. Just a few words. So we have the key partners. So let's, let's look at the illustration first. In other words, there's two opposing sides. There's two sections that face each other here. And on the one side here, on the right side, my right side, there is the organization producing value. And on the left side is the customer receiving that value. So we have, on the far right side, we have the partners. What is your organization's key partners? So, for example, in an automotive shop that we were working, Sean and I worked with together, <coughs> their partners are the auto parts stores. That's their partners. And that's who they depend upon to quickly deliver the parts they need when they need it to fix a job. Now, then we have the key activities up on the top and it shows a man with a shovel. That's the activities of an organization in the case of this automotive industry, this automotive shop. That's the tune-ups, the, the, the oil changes, the front-end alignments, the brake jobs that they do. That's the work of their organization. And directly below it are their key resources. And some of their key resources are their shop. If they didn't have a shop with a rack to do oil changes, and tools, then they'd be hard-pressed to do brake jobs in a very speedy and efficient way. So it's these partners, activities, and resources that together they support the value proposition that the firm offers. Now the value proposition is one of the most important aspects. 
The value proposition for this client is that they offer routine maintenance to reduce the need for repairs so that a customer can have dependable transportation that is safe. So that they are, the car starts on time and it's dependable and you know you can get in that car, you can drive 100, you can drive 1,000 miles and that car will hold together. So that's the value proposition and then we have the two uh, the customer relationships here that's portrayed with a heart Okay, that's going from the value proposition over to the customer segments. That's the relationship. And in this case, this is a company that's been in business since 1972. It's been family operated. The father and mother began it. Then the father passed away. And now the son and the mother are operating. <coughs> and then on the lower part, you see this tractor trailer. Well, that's the channels, the way that they deliver their value proposition. And again, what is that? Well, that's their shop. It's the hours that they keep. They're open Monday through Friday. They get there about 9.30 or 10. They're not always so prompt being there in the beginning of the day. They're not 8 o'clock in the morning, people. But they stay late. So people know that they can come in, and if they're working and it's 5.30 or 6 o'clock, they can come in and they can pick up their car, or they can drop their car off the night before, and then pick it up the next night. So that's their channels. And then on the far left here is the customer segments. Well, they have individuals. They have families. They have co small companies that don't do fleet work. Uh, and then they have a very specific group, which is people who have custom automobiles, you know, classics, or high-performance vehicles. Now, this is a shop that looks like it's right out of the 40s. And it's a perfect shop that could really inspire people to bring in their classic buggies, their hot rods, and have them worked on in a classic environment, not in a big corporate dealership or something like that. So there's uh, so what we did yesterday and what we do with clients is we help them to identify what are those aspects for them. We have them scribble it on uh, post-it notes, paste them into place here, and then, then that is their model as is. The next question is, what will it become? What's possible? Now underlying all of this is underlying the right-hand side of, of the partners, the activities, the resources, and the value proposition is the cost structure of an organization, what it costs to maintain that structure. And then on the left side, underneath the, the customer relationships, the channel, the channels, and split in half with the value proposition, and with the customer segment is the revenue streams. The revenue streams relate to the customer segments because you have people who have classic automobiles and performance automobiles, they are more than willing to pay a premium to have their car really looked after. I went into the shop one day and there was a Mustang there that I think was valued about $350,000. There are some real sweet automobiles that come through. So I want to share these ideas with you because they are crucial to a better understanding of where we're going in business today. Now this is, is uh, Alexander's second book, and it's clever. It's got bad value proposition design that's in black and white, and then you flip the book over, and then you have value proposition design in color. Just a little uh, interesting layout. And they're very graphical. Now, there's two of the major pieces that this book goes into. Of the nine elements here, we focus on two of the nine in this book. And that is the value proposition and the customer segment, the value, the, what the customer is looking for. And what they're looking for, what the author is helping the reader to find, is what he calls fit, F-I-T. What is the fit between what you're offering and what the customer <coughs> wants? And he goes through in 200 or 300 pages and helps you to identify what is the, in the value map, what is the gains that you're offering your client, and then what is the pains you're going to take away from the 
client. And then what are the key products and services that you offer? And then when you compare that with your customer profile, and you look at what are the gains that the customer wants, and what are the pains that the customer is trying to alleviate, and then what are the activities the customer performs that they would really like to have some solutions on? Now, when you have a fit between these two, then you get scalability. Then the organization is able to grow and grow quickly and strongly, and that the, that the revenue streams are greater than the cost, that as you innovate, that you're able to deliver greater value and the customers are happy to pay for that value because they want and need these services. And you have customers that are satisfied and you have profitability in your organization. Thank you.